Ladies and gents, we have a lot of weapons in the game that just got introduced in Season of the Dawn. Some returning weapons, some new weapons, some Season Pass weapons, as well as ritual weapons that we've pretty much already reviewed outside of the Gambit Shotgun, which will be out probably some point this week. Now, there will be a few weapons on this list that I have no idea how to get. Feel free to comment below where they're at, if you know where they're at. But at the making of this, all of the resources and random rolls that we're pulling is from the database. Some of these weapons are not even in the game yet. There will be a pinned comment down below, though, probably with some timestamps, as we love some timestamps stamps around here and that will continue to be updated once we get the location to each one of these weapons now before we jump into the random rolls of each one of these weapons in our description is a link to the exotic weapons armors as well as the ritual weapons for season 9 if you still have not seen that they will not be on this list as this list is pretty much just covering the random roll weapons that drop with season nine now there's also no particular order here that we have these weapons we're just going through the list that light gg has present for us so first up we have steel feather repeater this is a legendary kinetic auto rifle it shoots at 720 rounds per minute not many 720s we have in the game right now now this one actually has a number of roles and traits that we have never seen before so before we just get into the roles that I would say you should try out. Let's just go over some of these new traits. So first up, we have Elemental Capacitor. Increases stats based on the currently equipped subclass. So for Solar, you get an increase in reload speed. For Arc, you get an increase in handling. And for Void, you get an increase there in stability. Oh, wow. I love this, man. This is like an added element to your build crafting, right? Depending on your subclass, what you're rocking through artifact mods, this can also tie into this trait right here. Now, underneath it is another new legendary trait, Osmosis. Using your grenade ability changes this weapon's damage type to match your subclass until you stow it. We actually review this trait on Buzzard. It's much nicer than what we originally gave it credit for, simply because it allowed us to rock the rainbow inside of something like PvE. Essentially, boys, you throw your grenade and your weapon will now match that elemental type. Like I said, very useful in match game scenarios. Now, at the bottom, bottom here is another trait that's new to the game vorpal weapon increased damage against bosses vehicles and guardians with their super active wow that's really interesting i guess the question comes up is how much increase in damage is that especially against bosses but also against guardians with their super depending on how much it bypasses that damage resistance again it's really going to be hard to say which one of these roles or which one of these perks is the best way to go as i haven't really tested all of these new traits yet but now that we've seen those traits let's just talk about the synergy we see here on this 720 round per minute auto first up i love 720s and there's a lot of different routes here that you can go with 720s but let's point out at least what we know to be very very potent and that is of course feeding frenzy with multi-kill clip you can't go wrong with that we've seen that combination on a multitude of other weapons specifically something like adorative it's extremely nasty now another role that i'm very interested in you can always take the route of grave robber in swashbuckler swashbuckler actually will go up to times five on melee kills grave robber which has received previous buffs in the past reloads a portion of your magazine when you get a melee kill it also grants ammo for your primary ammo weapons those two combined together is a very nice combination it's actually an interesting one for a 720 round per minute auto simply because a 720 can go past the point of like an smg's intended range but still maintain that bullet hose up close very interesting right here guys i don't think i've seen that on a 720 so right off the bat guys those two Two combinations very much interest us now depending on elemental capacitor and how much it buffs certain aspects most notably how much it buffs something like stability you can always take the approach of elemental capacitor and combine it with something like slide waste now i know that sounds crazy there's nothing here boosting our lethality but if you take something like a 720 inside of crucible time to kill wise they're actually pretty viable at 0.83 seconds they're also more forgiving than most of our other auto rifle archetypes if you had something like slide waste that boost our stability when we slid as well as the base whatever increase in stability that we get from elemental capacitor we could be looking at one of the most stable auto rifles in the game now another combination that i'm interested in is subsistence and surrounded i would say in the sundial event this could be really good surrounded with something like surrounded spec in combination with subsistence for that continuous reload with each kill this weapon already has a 49 
one size magazine. Even if you gave it something like a pendant mag or even go the extra mile and gave it extended mag, can you imagine surrounded subsistence extended mag and actium war rig? Oh man. So those, those are it. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. Those are the perk combinations that I'm most interested in. To me, there's just so many good traits right here, but those combinations interest me the most. Now there's some standalone traits here. Osmosis is obviously a great trait to have, especially in match game scenarios. And again, we keep kind of returning back to Vorpal Weapon. Depending on how much that trait increases damage, which that's going to be like the very next thing we do. That could be a very lethal trait as well. Now, moving on. The next weapon on the list. Oh, Old Faithful. Oh, Reliable. The Old Fashioned. Boys, it has returned to us, and it actually may be one of the best hand cannons in the game. Yes, it is a kinetic hand cannon. It shoots at 140 rounds per minute. That's right. It's an adaptive frame, and it's got some deadly rolls. Now, again, I don't see a curated roll, but that's okay because the random rolls here, good God, do they look nasty. First up... Good lord almighty, man. I can't believe everything that is on this weapon right here. Okay, okay, let's just back up real quick. Let's just go with the obvious first up. This weapon can roll with something like Feeding Frenzy and Kill Clip, which is just an obvious give me, right? Feeding Frenzy, Kill Clip, holy hell. Now, Feeding Frenzy definitely seems like the more lethal perk, but let's not overlook Surrounded, okay? We can still go the route, especially in something like PvE, with Surrounded, Surrounded spec on this hand cannon. Now, another perk combination, you could take the route of something with a little more consistency, slide shot and moving target. Slide shot, of course, boosts our range and stability. We actually talked about this last week with Ancient Gospel. It adds pretty much an entire meter, which is excellent. On top of that, it boosts that stability. Combine that with something like moving target for that increase in target acquisition. Yeah, that's actually a very consistent role. Now, you could go the other way. If you don't need moving target, you can go slide shot and explosive payload. Again, this is more gauged toward PvP right now. That's kind of the routes that I would go right there. Now, I don't want to overlook Demolitionist because that's just a trait that you just don't, you don't ever want to overlook it. Demolitionist is such a good trait for both PvE and for PvP. But again, for my PvE players, you can still go Kill Clip Feeding Frenzy. That is definitely still an option. But Demolitionist, especially for me at least, I rock hard of him as light a bunch. Demolitionist is a godsend trait. So those are like the main traits that I would look for. Now, I know someone's going to ask, what about quick draw and snapshot? And I know that sounds like a crazy thing to ask, but it's actually not. There are certain situations and certain weapons, even on primaries, where quick draw is extremely nice. And even something like snapshot. Old fashioned though, handles well on its own. And I'm not saying that quick draw snapshot isn't nice. I've had a few 150s with snapshot, specifically something like waking vigil. That increased ADS speed was extremely snappy and I very much liked it. Do I think it's a necessary perk? Would I choose it over things like surrounded explosive payload? moving target or kill clip no no i don't think i would but again man it's been a minute since i use old fashioned i would just have to see man i would just have to see overall old fashioned's looking pretty nasty now moving on to the next weapon on the list patron of lost causes this is a kinetic scout rifle and yes it's a 200 round per minute scout now i'm not sure if this is available yet this is linked to the sundial event in some way probably one of the obelisks pretty sure it's not available but it also comes with some of the new traits you got elemental capacitor Vorpal weapon as well as osmosis but let's just recognize what we know what we know on a 200 round per minute scout rifle rapid hit oh it's nasty you think mine is annoying wait until a vouchsafe with rapid hit is pepper in your face now i have not actually reviewed it i've only played with one in my life i was on a friend's account reviewing a weapon and i came across his vouchsafe with rapid hit and full auto and my god was it disgusting but what i found out quickly was that full auto was nice but not necessary instead i thought to myself what if what if i could shoot this gun with rapid hit and explosive payload and to be present in the kinetic slot oh my god boys and girls look at her she's right there yes this thing can actually roll together rapid hit explosive payload and obvious choice boys now again when we talk about elemental capacitor this is a 200 round per minute scout to me it already has good handling so you don't need a rock and arc subclass reload speed is already pretty decent so you don't need solar but again if you rock a void subclass you get a boost there in stability and depending on that boost i don't know maybe you can actually get away with not using rapid hit maybe you don't need it but again the big benefit of rapid hit is not just the increase in stability but also the reload speed now there is opening shot there at the top 
top of the trait pool, which is not really necessary. I mean, maybe on really far range maps, maybe in something like Gambit if you're invading. But again, that's only improved accuracy and range on the opening shot of an attack. This is a 200 round per minute scout rifle. And for the most part, it will always take you four shots to kill opponents. So to me, I would just load in stability, load an explosive payload, and just get crazy. Again, I'm like kicking myself, man. I need to test Vorpal Weapon and Elemental Capacitor to get an idea. They could be crap perks. I have no idea. They could be great. We'll just have to wait and see. Now, moving on. A shotgun has returned to us. That's right, boys and girls. Hawthorne's Field Forge Shotgun. It is present in the kinetic slot, and it's got random rolls. Now, it's actually got a curator roll here, which is what we have now. That's just what the static roll is. Nothing special, boys. It's got smooth board. Look away now. It's no good, but this is a lightweight archetype shotgun. One thing I want to point out, if you want to be a speed demon with something like Dune Marchers or Transversive Steps or Stompies, combine that with lightweight weapons, especially a lightweight shotgun, you will fly. Now, random rolls. All right, I'm looking, I'm looking. First up, I want to point out, Firmly Planet is present on a shotgun. Somebody, lose your mind. Increase accuracy, stability, and handling when firing while crouched. May sound like a garbage perk. It's actually not. It's actually pretty stupid, dumb good. Now, I've not used it on a shotgun. It's good on a sniper, so I don't know. Maybe it's good, but that increase in handling means that every time you slide shotgun, you now get a boost to the handling of that shotgun, which is already stacking onto that lightweight frame to begin with, and that boost there to accuracy. You combine that with something like opening shot, this lightweight shotgun might actually actually have some pretty decent kill range potential. A lot of speculation here, boys. A lot of speculation. I don't know. Full choke, firmly planted Akaras rounds with opening shot. Yeah, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Slide shotgun, get the increase in accuracy and range bump, maybe. But let's just look at the PVE potential. First up, it's in the kinetic slot and we have the potential to roll Grave Robber and one, two punch together. Oh my God, that is so nasty. Hallelujah. Now just above it, you've got field prep for that increase in inventory size and surround it right next to it. Throw on a surrounded spec. Make sure you stay crouched for that increase in reload speed as well as increase in ammo reserves. That's a deadly combination together. And then of course, if you are wanting to rock something like Demolitionist, defeat him whatever your build is, that's also a route to go. A lot of crazy stuff here, man. I don't know, it's been a minute since I rock Hawthorne. We'll definitely have to try out these rolls. Now moving on to the next weapon on the list, we have Perfect Paradox. Yes, Perfect Paradox has returned to us, and I'm pretty sure this is through a quest line, right? I haven't even done it yet. Now, this may not have been the best shotgun back in the day, but my God, was this thing beautiful. Now, it's random rolls here. Again, crazy stuff I'm seeing here. Firmly planted on this shotgun. What is life? Now, this is a rapid fire shotgun, so it's gonna be a little different than the lightweight. It shoots much faster, but it also has lower impact, meaning that the one hit kill range on these weapons are normally much less than like say an aggressive shotgun or other higher impact shotguns now the trade combinations that are really jumping out to me right now first up rampage and slide shot absolutely disgusting absolutely disgusting if you wanted to be an eight from sun up to sundown that is hands down the way to go and really just one stack of rampage and something like crucible is pretty much all you're gonna need now the weapon also has opening shot but again i like opening shot on weapons that i know is gonna get the one hit ko from great ranges not saying that perfect paradox can't take advantage of it all i'm saying is i'd rather just pump out two shots to get the guaranteed kill and proc something like rampage in the process now another perk combination and a trait we haven't seen on a shotgun in quite some time Tom is of course trench barrel after a successful melee hit the weapon gains increased damage handling and reload speed for a short duration or until three shots are fired a lot of different routes you can go here if you're in the ship and you got enemies all around you trench barrel threat detector is completely fine to work together you could go fill prep and trench barrel as well for that increase in ammo reserves or if you're fully specking out for your melee you can just rock something like one two punch would say something like either slide shot or even threat detector. Those are both very good combinations. Like if you constantly would just slide shotgun into a major, finish them off with your melee, and just keep doing that over and over again, you'll never have to stop and reload. You got slide shot that's doing it for you. But again, don't overlook trench barrel, especially in this sandbox. Now moving on, we've got breach light. 
Oh, baby. I actually have this sidearm, and yeah, I very much like it. It's an aggressive burst sidearm, meaning it shoots two bullets every time you pull the trigger. It's in the same archetype as something like Death by Scorn or Smuggler's Word. This one actually has some very interesting rolls, and I actually used it yesterday. It felt pretty nice. I haven't used it extensively, but I thought mine was doing pretty good. Now, hands down, trait combination-wise, the biggest lethality perk here that I see is multi-kill clip. You can, of course, combine that with something like Outlaw for that increase and reload speed not a bad combination now considering that this weapon is in the kinetic slot this opens up your energy slot especially in pvp to a bunch of different snipers good snipers beloved apostate which actually makes me consider something like quick draw now the trait next to it is a trait that i beg you not to overlook it's actually two traits here number one threat detector is actually really nice on a sidearm normally you're in close proximity of your enemies anyways but above it is under pressure i'm trying to remember if i used a sidearm with under pressure before I feel like I have. Under pressure though, guys, hands down, fantastic perk. Yes, it requires you to get to the bottom of your magazine to get that bump there in stability and accuracy. But when you're there, it's good, man. It's golden. It's beautiful on fusion rifles. It may potentially work really well here. Now, our next weapon on the list, Cold Front. This thing looks like Anio, but it's returned to us as a 750 round per minute SMG. That's right, boys. It's in the aggressive frame archetype and it's curated roll. Oh, we've got a curated roll. Finally, comes with Hammer Forge rifling flared magwell zen moment and osmosis hot damn looks like buzzer's got some competition now the random rolls oh this looks nice oh oh is that range finder okay so this weapon can roll with range finder which is extremely interesting considering that range finder at least to my knowledge is not found on any other smg in the game like i'm looking right now no i don't think i see it on a single other smg okay you can honestly take the approach of maximum stability maximum range and go zen moment range finder together seems a little overkill but hey sure why not you want to cross map some people it's already a 750 it doesn't have the best range stat already like maybe if you rolled it with something like full bore with accurized rounds okay what's that like an extra 25 it kind of gets it there but i don't think it's going to outpace the range of anio you're going to have to use something like range finder if you want to outrange anio now we've said it before but definitely don't overlook feeding frenzy and kill clip now and even more consistent role is zim moment and dynamic sway reduction if you want to just keep everything close range and just get the most stability and accuracy that can honestly do good for you that's actually pretty interesting overall i would honestly take osmosis with feeding frenzy for pve as we've already tested osmosis and yes it's a very good trait having something like feeding frenzy for that increase in reload speed you don't want to go auto loading holster because again every time you stow your smg you're going to get rid of your elemental effect that you just applied with osmosis so if you're looking for like a replacement for buzzard feeding frenzy osmosis would work well for you now our next weapon on the list is a return of a legend that's right uriel's gift i know man some of us right now are sweating that's how badly this weapon affected us back in year one now this weapon is in the energy slot it's still a 450 round per minute auto and i have no idea how to get this thing now it's random rolls all right there is nothing we can say about this weapon that will ever match its lethality that it was back in year one but we're gonna try now, first up, let me just point out Disruption Break, okay? Disruption Break, I've mentioned it before, and I feel like I'm just going blue in the face, man. That is such a good trait. It's fantastic, fellas. If you're dealing with barrier champions, or at least last season, I know we don't have anti-barrier mods for auto rifles this season, but if you're dealing with anything with shields, Disruption Break is so nice. And yes, it works in PvP too. Not really utilized well, but it works. Now, we also have Moving Target, which is not a bad trait. The problem is, is what I'm seeing here is there's not many trait combinations that are really that lethal you know i see dynamic sway reduction which is nice that increase in accuracy maybe combine that with moving target to allow the weapon to be as consistent as it can possibly be you could go the route of like quick draw and maybe kill clip this is a 450 it doesn't have the best handling speed it's not bad but it's not great which is why having that increased handling even in like 1v1 scenarios where you're going around corners and you just like the weapon to ready faster could be extremely beneficial here unfortunately if you rock that with something like kill clip you're gonna have to default to his base reload speed in order to proc it but again we also have the artifact mod that's pretty much handing out enhanced rifle loader so that might actually make up for the reload speed other than that nothing too impressive guys i'm not gonna lie if it was last season i guess i would probably pick it up for disruption break and anti-barrier as it also comes with armor piercing rounds maybe triple tap and disruption break i don't know boys i don't know man 
man. There's nothing but dazzling here. Nothing that's just like selling me on Urios. Now, our next weapon on the list is Elatha. Elatha? Elatha? I don't know, guys. I can't say it, man. It's a fusion rifle. A high-impact fusion. And we don't have many options. Like, I know we have Aaron Till and Wiz and Rebuke. That's about it. This one, though, yeah, it looks like it's got some booping potential. First up, I'm seeing some backup plan, which is always a nasty time. Maybe even something like backup plan quick draw. Oh, oh my God. Yes, that's that's it. That's it for PvP. Backup plan quick draw. GG, boys, go home. You're done. You won the game. Now, you could also go Surrounded for PvE. Maybe something like Surrounded and Field Prep. I don't know, man. I don't use fusions often inside of PvE, outside of the exotic fusions. Hands down to me, though, backup plan, quick draw. That's what I would go for. These high impact fusions are meant for one thing and one thing only, which is to kill you from approximately 120 meters away and just to piss you off. That quick draw backup plan combination will definitely get the job done. Now, moving on, the next weapon on the list, Gallant Charge. This is the Sundial Fusion Rifle, and this one's actually got some pretty crazy perks. First up, Lead from Gold. Picking up heavy ammo also grants ammo to this weapon. Very interesting. You can actually rock heavy finisher, proc something like that, and give yourself back special ammo. Now, of course, if you utilize something like that, you miss out on the damage dealing perks here, but this weapon is already a high impact fusion, so it's already got good damage, at least for PvP. Hands down, though, for PvP, I love the idea of tap the tree with demolitionists those two together especially tap the trigger just by itself is so good in pvp do not overlook tap the trigger on a fusion now another trait to not overlook and something to just consider is no distractions in rangefinder i i just i don't know something makes me want to try it no distractions on a fusion what what even is that and then of course you're going to be aiming down sights to proc no distractions you'll be procking rangefinder in the process maybe maybe you'll be able to stare at somebody that's shooting you with everything in their power and you still map them. Sounds fun. Now we also have multi kill clip, which I don't think has been on a fusion rifle ever, which I really do like multi kill clip. Unfortunately, there's nothing here helping that reload speed. We don't got feeding frenzy. The reload speed is also 24. It's pretty bad. So yeah, you could rock multi-kill clip, but that reload speed is going to be abysmal. Make sure you rock that enhanced rifle loader from the artifact. Now, our next weapon on the list is the Sundial Grenade Launcher, Martyr's Retribution. Now, I've seen a lot of things about this one. We're going to be trying it very, very soon. Pretty sure it's dropping from like, what is it? The Mars Obelisk in relation to the Sundial. But it's actually present in an archetype we have not seen yet called Waveframe. One-shot handheld grenade launcher, projectiles release a wave of of energy when they contact the ground now the wave of energy is like similar to a thermite grenade a very different twist on a grenade launcher great for just controlling areas now the perk combinations here most grenade launchers i love auto loading holster it's a single fire you shoot it once you rock your other weapon, and in the process, the weapon reloads itself. Now, if you're dealing with a bunch of shielded enemies, I'm curious to know if something like Genesis, if you were to proc multiple shields in one grenade blast, in that one thermite wave, could it overload this grenade launcher? I haven't tested it. I have no idea. We're just speculating here, but that is an option. Overall, there's a lot of unique roles here. I don't know if I would go with something like moving target or range finder. Normally, I tend to hip fire my grenade launchers a bunch, so I don't really use those perks much maybe this one performs differently it is a different archetype to me though i would honestly go something like auto loading holster and maybe demolitionist now moving on to our next weapon on the list the return of the prophecy weapon jack queen king now this is a 150 round per minute hand cannon pretty sure it's not in the game yet but this one has the potential to go head to head against many of our top 150s in both pve and pvp so first up the trait combination that really jumps out to me obviously rampage subsistence both of those together extremely nasty i know it's got swashbuckler but swashbuckler essentially gives us the same buff that rampage gives us without requiring two extra kills that's like the main one there is dragon Dragonfly, you can rock something like Dragonfly with subsistence. There's not Outlaw or Feeding Frenzy or anything like that here. So you're not going to get like a Fatebringer 2.0. But having something continuously feed you ammo with each kill and proccing those AoE explosions every single time, yeah, that could be extremely nasty. That can actually be better than our Outlaw Dragonfly combo. Now, is it better than a Rapid Hit Dragonfly combo? Oh, that's tough, man. That's tough. But I will say something about Jack Queen King. Back in year one, it was one of the most consistent hand cannons in the game. 
So if it returns to us with that same level of consistency, every roll, every roll outside of just like the most garbage roll is going to do you just fine. Now, moving on to our next weapon, we have another prophecy weapon, Infinite Pass Returning. This is a energy lightweight frame pulse rifle, meaning it shoots at 450 rounds per minute. Same as something like Nightshade. Hands down, guys, this may be my favorite pulse rifle in the game. And I'm not even talking about its random roll version. I'm talking about its static roll version was my favorite roll. So many combinations we can pull here, guys. Let me go ahead and just lay it out for you. First up, I'm looking at moving target Zim moment together. Absolutely disgusting. Don't overlook it. Zim moment by itself on a pulse rifle is already nasty. On a 450 round per minute pulse, in combination with something like moving target oh my god now there's also the grave robber swashbuckler combo which is normally a combination i'm like heck yeah go for it on a pulse rifle i don't know it just it seems really interesting right you just don't see it that often if ever it's a unique combination though which is why i recommend us not overlooking it now we also have eye of the storm if you were to go the route of eye of the storm and moving target moving target which helps you by itself in that target acquisition while aiming and moving eye of the storm increasing and boosting that accuracy as your health got lower it's gonna be tough man like would you choose eye of the storm over zim moment maybe maybe if the weapon already feels stable enough and i feel like it just couldn't stabilize itself out even more then i guess i would choose eye of the storm but again we'll have to test that one out those three together are extremely disgusting and then of course you've got dragonfly which i would honestly take the route of dragonfly in demolitionist together that aoe damage killing multiple ads proccing demolitionist could be nasty fellas could be a great role for pve now moving on to our next weapon we have the return of another meta weapon back in year one last hope oh my god this is an adaptive frame amelon sidearm it fires three rounds per burst and it was one of the most lethal weapons back in year one now hands down i'm just going to be real with you guys if you want to break stuff in the game, tap the trigger rangefinder. There you go. That's it. Game over, boys. You're done. You're in a sidearm meta. But wait, 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 wait. We can't stop there. Feeding Frenzy multi-kill clip on a sidearm, man. Now, that can actually go both ways. That can go for PvE or for PvP. Now, I know some of you are probably wondering why tap the trigger. Why did I say tap the trigger and rangefinder? Let me go ahead and explain something. Tap the trigger, considering that it's a burst fire sidearm, it should proc with each consecutive burst. Meaning, even though it says it grants a short period of increased accuracy, if it works the same way that it did with our other burst sidearms, it will actually proc with each and every shot. Meaning, you will have a ginormous jump there in stability and accuracy with each trigger pull. And when you combine that with something like Rangefinder, for that increase in range, my lord. I just want to find someone right now with that roll. If you have this weapon, I don't even know if it's dropped. If you have it, let me know. All right, we're getting really, really ahead of ourselves. Let's move on to Traveler's Judgment. Oh my God, this sidearm is back too. So back in year one, everybody was really hung up on Last Hope. And I don't know, I guess I was trying to be a hippie or something. I was like, you know what? I love Traveler's Judgment. It's the better sidearm. I really try to sell it. Nobody was buying it. But this sidearm actually might have a chance. Maybe, maybe, maybe. It also comes with Tap the Trigger. And like I said, we haven't tested it yet. But if it works the same way like it did with our other sidearms that are burst fire sidearms, tap the trigger should work with every trigger pull. It also comes with the perk rapid hit. Now that one's an interesting one. It's a three burst sidearm. So technically, can we get three stacks of rapid hit with each shot? I want to say we've tested something like this out in the past and that's not how it works. But I believe, boys, I believe that's how it's going to work right now. Rapid hit, tap the trigger, crazy stability, multiple stacks of rapid hit with each pull. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. It could be so nasty, fellas. You even got something like Feeding Frenzy and Surround It. It also comes with Disruption Break, which again, like I said, just don't overlook Disruption Break, guys. It's so good. And if you're going to rock Disruption Break, obviously, like, go Disruption Break and Auto Loading Holster because you're not going to kill your enemy with this sidearm. Instead, or at least in PvE, if you're breaking shields, you're going to shoot them, proc Disruption Break, and then swap to your Kinetic, right? So while you swap to your Kinetic, this sidearm here would just simply reload for you. Crazy stuff, guys. A lot of crazy stuff here. Could be be really deadly though now moving on we have the seasonal sniper rifle trophy hunter now this is a energy sniper rifle and it is an aggressive frame sniper and my 
god, look at the size of that thing. It can't even fit on the screen. Now, this one comes with an assortment of pretty unique perks. It's got a curated role with Dragonfly and Genesis. But underneath it, it's got that lead from gold perk, which grants ammo back to this weapon when you pick up heavy. It's also got Disruption Break, which we just talked about the benefits of Disruption Break. And it's got Genesis. Holy hell. So you can actually roll it with Genesis to break your combatant shield, which refills the weapon from reserves. And you can rock Disruption Break. Those two combined together. That's actually better than auto-loading holster on that sidearm. I mean, it's not better, but it's got some more utility. Now, the weapon also comes a snapshot, which, I don't know, the PvP side of me is saying, try it. Try it, Cross. But there's really nothing else in that first column that's gauged toward PvP. So even though it does come with snapshot, ah, uh, you know, I think this is gonna be more gauged toward PvE. Now, again, forpal weapon. We don't know how much it boosts damage. It does give us a bump in damage toward bosses. Could we use Vorpal weapon and triple tap together to have a very lethal combination against our bosses? Or take the other route of Vorpal weapon on this aggressive sniper. Does it actually increase our damage enough to one shot body shot supers inside of Crucible? Oh boy. All right. All right, maybe it is a PvP sniper. I don't know. We haven't tested it. I don't know. A lot of speculation. Now, our next weapon on the list is Line in the Sand. Oh, this thing is beautiful. Pretty sure it's dropping right now. This is a linear fusion rifle. It's in the precision frame archetype, and it's pretty much single-handedly destroying our Crucible Ritual weapon. Now, obviously, the main trait here that we see is firing line. This weapon deals increased precision damage when near two or more allies. But even underneath it is a returning part, Clown Cartridge. Reloading this weapon randomly overfills it from reserves. This was actually an old school perk on sniper rifles back in the day. Depending on how much it procs, I don't know boys, could be nasty man. Mulligan is a lot better in D2 than it was in D1. So Clown Cartridge here could actually be pretty nasty. Now, we also have backup plan. And not just backup plan, you've got backup backup plan and moving target. Maybe combine both of those together inside of PvP. Again though, that kind of requires us to be aiming down sights in order for us to take advantage of moving target. And backup plan, for the most part, when you draw your fusion rifle, it's shooting before it's all the way out. So my fear here is that backup plan won't be easily utilized. But again, you could definitely take the route of PvE. I'm looking at firing line in combination with rapid hit. I'm also looking at rapid hit and rampage. And again guys, let's not overlook clown car cartridge i actually wish it was in the first trait column and combined with something like firing line right now moving on to our next weapon we've only got two more weapons left guys moss epoch am i saying that right it's an old rocket launcher and it has returned to us it's in the aggressive frame archetype and at one time this rocket launcher was single-handedly carrying me through all kinds of public events it was beautiful and this one got some pretty good stuff here we've got impact casing of course for that increase in damage on direct hits but let's take a look at the trait columns first up very interesting disruption break is on a rocket launcher what I don't know guys, I have no idea. Maybe if you wanted to go like the disruption break, Genesis combo, maybe disruption break and auto loading holster. It's very interesting. I, I have never seen that before. Now in this sandbox, I really don't know how cluster bombs are doing, but maybe for PVE, maybe cluster bombs, auto loading holster with impact casing, shoot all your shots off, swap to your special weapon to continue doing damage and then swap back. Now our last rocket launcher on the list was actually the one that people said was gonna be Galahorn. Not quite. It's a precision frame rocket launcher. And this curated role here, I have no idea what Bungie was trying to go for. We've got tap the trigger on a rocket launcher. Now next to it is ambitious assassin, which I can understand, but not tap the trigger. I have no idea what that's about. Now the roles here are kind of similar to what we just went over on the other rocket launcher. Cluster bomb sounds pretty good. Impact casing. I don't really know what to do anywhere else. Maybe ambitious assassin. Now this is a precision frame rocket launcher, so it already tracks. So I guess you can go like cluster bomb, and quick draw maybe utilize something like that in pvp good work boys well fellas those are all of our weapons let me know in the comments below what you think again there will be a pinned comment down below for any weapons that are questionable in terms of how to find them. And as the season goes on, guys, we will continue to review each and every one of these. Also, if you're new to our channel, man, feel free to subscribe. We do videos like this one pretty much every single season. So stick around. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.